Hi, Mr. Tegmeyer here. Today's topic is work, energy, and power. Work and energy you should be familiar with from science class. If not, we'll re-familiarize you with it. And we're going to throw in some power, and we'll talk about that. So remember that energy is the ability to do work. And we're not talking here about the, the work that you do when you're outside mowing the yard or raking leaves or at the grocery store or the pizza place or whatever. We're talking about work in terms of um, science and engineering. So here is the definition of work. So work is energy. It's a type of energy. It's a form of energy. And it's transferred when a force moves through a distance. But the important thing to note here is that the force has to be, uh, and you see here the parallel sign, has to be parallel to that direction of motion. So if I'm pushing down on something and it's moving horizontally, only the horizontal component of that force is the applicable force to calculate the work. Another important thing to note is that uh, work is just like uh, energy in terms of the units. So you see down below, work is in terms of joules, and it's a force times a distance, newton meters, which is a joule. Same as work. I'm sorry, same as energy. So let's take a look at an example. Um, here we have a 50 pound ball, which by the way is a pretty heavy ball. We're gonna lift that four feet, which is oh about chest high for uh, an average person, I guess. And we're gonna do that in five seconds, which is actually pretty slow. So you can lift a heavy ball up to your chest in about five seconds. So the question here is how many joules of work did the student do to complete that, uh, that task? So we take force times the distance, and here we're just lifting it straight up. So we have 50 pounds times four feet, and we get 200 foot-pounds. But, so that is work, but it's not the, the work in joules. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. So the question was, how many joules? Well, we calculated, because we have pounds here, which is uh, U.S. customary, and we have feet, which is U.S. customary units, or some people would say English units, and we have seconds, which is universal. So we can convert pounds to newtons and feet to meters if we want, or we can do all the calculations right away and convert everything at the end. But let's take a look at it. So we need to convert it to SI units and then calculate the work. So in this case, we have 50 pounds, and one. there's one newton, and we have a newton is equal to about a quarter of a pound. So 50 pounds is equal to 222.5 newtons. In one meter, there are 3.28 feet, so four feet is 1.22 meters. So we take those forces, those uh, distances, and multiply them, and we get 271 joules. So just for perspective, what is one joule in terms of things that we know every day? So if you consider an apple, an apple is about one newton, and if you lift it three feet or so, which is about a meter, so that's about uh, to your belly button or so. So if you take an apple, lift it from the floor to your belly button, the work that you do there, the energy that you impart is one joule. So let's refresh our memory just a little bit on energy. And we said at the beginning, and we've said before, that energy, the definition, is the ability to do work. And so what we see here, we see a roller coaster and a solar cell, uh, solar sail, pardon me, and a fuel cell. And within there, we see different kinds of energy. So for example, light, heat, mechanical, chemical, and electrical are all different forms of energy, and energy can take a lot of different forms. So let's take a look at a couple of those forms now. 
one of those forms uh, that we haven't really talked about before, but you should have learned from science, it's called potential energy. So most people think of potential energy uh, as stored energy. So for example, a battery has stored energy in terms of, it's actually chemical energy, and it turns it into uh, electrical energy. Uh, in the previous couple of slides, I talked about an apple uh, or a ball, and you pick it up. When you're moving it from the ground to some elevation that is giving it potential energy. And the other form of energy that goes along with potential energy uh, many times in our discussions of energy is kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, when we, we've heard the word kinetic a lot, and kinetic basically means moving. So kinetic energy is essentially energy that's moving or energy in motion. So your car has kinetic energy. Here you see windmills, they have kinetic energy. Moving water has kinetic energy. Uh, space shuttle that's lifting off has kinetic energy. So anything that moves has it and it's very easy to calculate. So when we talk about potential energy and kinetic energy, we can actually change back and forth between the two. And probably a good example is a roller coaster. So a roller coaster goes from you know the top of a hill where it's a little bit slower and maybe even on the, the first hill, it's really not going very fast at all. But all of a sudden it goes downhill and it gains a lot of speed, which is a lot of kinetic energy. And then it goes back up, it gets a little slower and it just keeps going back and forth. Uh, but eventually it does continue to slow down and a lot of that energy is lost we say um, it's because of friction and and some other some other things that happen but we talk about energy that's lost and that's usually lost to heat or light there's still energy it's still conserved we can't create it and we can't destroy it it just changes form so let's talk a little bit about how energy changes form so one of the things that we've talked about are the different kinds of fuels and different kinds of energy. So for example, we've talked about fossil fuels and all the things you see on this slide in red on the left. But lately, we've been talking also about electrical energy and Ohm's law. So how do you convert uh, fossil fuel uh, like gasoline or diesel fuel? How do you convert that to electrical energy? Well, this slide really kind of tells you how. So in that example, you would take chemical energy, convert it to heat and then mechanical energy so for example you might burn that fuel uh, and that creates heat uh, and that heat turns a uh, turbine and that turns a generator and then the generator creates electrical energy I'm not going to go through all of the different things here, but I do want you to just kind of take note of how the different kinds of energy turn from you know, whatever their source is into uh, electrical energy. So one of the things that um, a car can do with chemical energy, for example, is turn that into mechanical heat. I'm sorry, mechanical energy. Um, or heat. Um, and in, in a lot of the cases uh, in the automobile, both are beneficial. You can actually use some of the heat. You don't lose it all, although you do lose some. Now we've talked about this concept before on this slide, that being efficiency. And efficiency is just a, a ratio of energies. And here you can see the actual equation for it. It's the ratio of energy out over energy in. So if you look back to the previous example, uh, on the top we started with fossil fuels. So if we started with gasoline, we'd have so much uh, chemical potential energy there. And what we end up getting out of it is actually something less than that. We can never get the exact same energy out or even more energy out. It always has to be less. Um, that's just a, a, a law of nature. And we'll talk about thermodynamics in another unit. 
but this ratio is actually called efficiency. Um, it's something that we've seen before, but here is just the exact definition. Some people will multiply by the percentage to get the percentage, but you get the picture. The key point is you can never get more out than you can in. So efficiency will always be less than 100%. So now let's talk, let's add the element of time. So we've established that energy and work are pretty much interchangeable. They're pretty much the same. And, but we want to know, well, what happens to that energy over time? Or what if time is an element in the, the thing that we're doing? Uh, so for example, I want to move an object five feet in, uh, it weighs 50 pounds and I want to move it five feet, but I want to do it quickly. Well, there's a way to actually measure that and that's to take the energy uh, or work and divide it by time. And the definition of that energy or work per time is called power. Uh, the element there is P and as you can see here down at the bottom, energy uh, or work, the units are joules. And if you divide a joule per second, the, it is called a watt. So let's apply that concept to the example we had earlier where we had, remember we had the 50 pound ball, the student was lifting that ball four feet in five seconds. And there's a reason we put the five seconds on that earlier slide because we wanted to introduce power. So the question now is how many watts of power did the student use to lift the ball? So we calculated energy before. Now all we have to do is divide that energy, which was uh, force times distance, uh, and divide by time. So remember from before we calculated that uh, we converted pounds to newtons and we converted feet to meters and we came up with 271 joules. When we divide that by five seconds, we actually get 54.3 joules per second or 54 watts.